Hi everybody, my name is Wayne Leahy and today I'd like to share with you our examination of the asymmetric edge honing of PCBN cutting tools using laser ablation in hard part turning. What we'll cover today is divided into five key sections. So I'll introduce briefly element six and also the motivation for this work both the technical motivation and also, I guess, the social or collaborative uh, motivation, which I think is also really important. And then I'll also start the introduction to the methodology uh, and the selection of, of PCBN in hard turning applications. My colleague Maria will then take over and, and uh, take you through the edge preparation of the PCBN inserts using laser ablation and some of the characterization uh, of those edges. And finally, my colleague Luis will look at the performance of those cutting tools in hard part turning tests before he makes some conclusions on the work. Element 6 is one of the world's leading producers of synthetic diamond and related super materials. We have about 1900 employees and we supply approximately 5,000 customers with about 20,000 uh, unique products. Maria, Luis and I uh, sit at the Global Innovation Center, which is based uh, just outside of Oxford. Um, and in that facility, we have uh, 110 engineers, material scientists and technologists, and we're lucky to have end-to-end -end capability. So right from material synthesis to end uh, application across a number of different uh, product areas. This slide shows you some of the uh, products and formats that we supply uh, to our customers. The amber uh, uh, powder on, on the left there is uh, one of the key uh, raw materials for, for PCBN. This is uh, cubic boron nitride. The discs that you see at the top um, that is the primary format that we supply our customers uh, raw materials. So it tends to be either a 76 millimeter disc or up to a, a 94 millimeter disc. But you can also see that we supply uh, cut segments and we also supply, you can see at the bottom of the, of the picture, what we call integral insert blanks. Um, and these materials um, uh, allow uh, the use of, of finlock holes, but also dimples and, and, and things like that. Our primary responsibility at the Global Innovation Center is the development of innovative uh, super hard materials, but we're also responsible for the technology that is required to develop those materials. And a small part of that uh, that comes under my responsibility is our applications laboratory. Um, and so what you see in this schematic is some of the technologies we brought together to try to improve the, the productivity of, of our laboratory. So we brought together automated cutting tool testing enabled by a cobot um, with uh, instrumentation and uh, sensorized uh, tool holders. Um, and, and all of that is supported and enabled on a digital platform that uh, allows uh, worldwide access to, to the information in close to real time. Showed you a little bit of the innovative super hard materials and the innovative technologies uh, that are required to produce them. But we're also really interested in uh, exploring the way that we work. Um, and this case study is an example of, of that. So in uh, November of last year, we, we set ourselves a challenge. Uh, we we kind of wanted to explore how fast could we go? So we said to ourselves, well, you know, would it be possible to conduct a set of experiments, uh, analyze the results, write a paper that described those, those results, send them to some peer reviewers, get it back, make the corrections in a 24 hour period? Um, and that's what you're going to see today. So the collaboration component was a big motivator for, for me, but there's also a very interesting technical component. So many of you 
will be fully aware of the uh, usefulness of PCBN uh, in enabling uh, hard part turning. And you'll also be um, very familiar um, that the role of micro edge geometry plays in, in tool performance, especially for brittle materials uh, like uh, PCBN. And so what we wanted to do was to examine the role of micro edge geometry and more specifically asymmetric uh, edge honing, which is essentially the interface uh, between the crater and the flank face of the tool. Again, this is not new um, or that it is reasonably well known that asymmetric edge honing does offer the potential to um, influence the performance of PCBN cutting tools. But what I, I guess uh, supports um, and enables this work is the development of laser ablation processes uh, and more particularly tailored to, to PCBM. So the two key objectives of this work are to investigate the influence of micro edge geometry on, on cutting performance uh, in hard part turning and also to evaluate the laser ablation process on the cutting edge integrity of PCBM tools. Just like to share with you now the selection criteria for the PCBN grades used in this study. We decided to select materials that had extremely different uh, compositions and properties. So we selected DCN450, which has 45% CBN and a ceramic binder with DBS900, which has 90% CBN and a metallic binder. The behavior of these uh, is very, very different. DBS 900 is very, very strong and very tough, whereas DCN 450 has very high thribochemical wear resistance, but it has generally lower strength and toughness. Laser processing is a relatively new industrial process for finishing super hard materials in tool making and has been an enabling force in this study. As you can see in the videos, a focused laser beam is absorbed by the material and removed from its surface by ionization and vaporization. It's becoming an increasingly common technique in tool making, particularly in PCD, but also emerging in PCBM. It's of interest to us because of the opportunities it opens up. Our discussion today will focus on using this technique to finely control edge geometry and use this to improve the tool life of inserts used in hard part turning. So why does laser processing make a difference? Laser ablation allows us to have fine control over the cutting edge geometry in a number of ways. Laser ablation is a non-contact method, which means no matter how many parts are made, the edge will not change. Unlike in grinding, where the grinding wheel contact area will change over time, impacting final tool geometry. Laser also works in a fundamentally different way to grinding. It's able to cut through individual grains. Grinding works by removing whole grains at a time, leaving the binder behind and an edge which is defined by the size of the remaining grains. Laser, on the other hand, cuts through single grains and binder alike. This means that the cutting edge is independent of grain size. While this is true for PCD tooling, we're finding the situation is actually much more complicated for PCBN, where both binder type and binder content have an impact on the edge, edge quality. Laser is a flexible technique in that you only need a direct line of sight between the laser and the workpiece, so it can create very fine structures compared to a grinding process, which needs direct access between the workpiece and the grinding wheel. Laser is also capable of achieving very small features because of its beam size, which is the order of tens of microns. All these factors combine to make laser perfect for creating asymmetric cutting edge cones. So what do we mean by this? 
we're creating a controlled rounding on the edge which joins the rake face and the flank face. Previous work based on carbide cutting edges has shown that varying this rounding from a perfect circle can control the position that tool wear happens and when used correctly extend tool life. This has been difficult to apply to PCBN tools in the past, but is made possible here by the fine control achieved by laser processing. There are a number of different techniques used to describe the asymmetry of a hone, but the method used here is the one defined in literature by Denkener in 2012, which has also been adopted by Alicona in their measuring software. It relies upon a K-factor, which is defined as the ratio of the length of the approach on the rake face, this S gamma term, compared to the drop on the flank face, the S alpha term. Brush honing tends to produce a symmetric hone where the approach is as long as the drop is deep, which gives a K factor equal to one. Asymmetric cones have been achieved by developing a series of programs on DMG LaserTech 20, each of which produces a different K-factor. By increasing either the separation of laser passes to increase S gamma, or the pulse energy to increase the depth of the drop S alpha, we're able to finally control the K-factor. The laser programs each have a runtime of around one minute compared to brush honing for which time depends on the grade being used and can be up to 30 minutes, although can hone multiple corners simultaneously. So having established how laser processing allows us to achieve these microgeometries, Luis is going to talk about how this impacts the wear, but first I need to highlight the impact the laser has on the material which could also impact tool wear. Firstly, we compare the surface roughness of a laser honed edge to a brush honed edge and find that the laser process sample is visibly much rougher than the brush honed one. It also has particles on the surface which are thought to be redeposited debris or thermally affected binder. We find the roughness to be particularly bad in this grade of PCD, PCBN, our DCN450 product and believe this is because of its high binder content. Compared to a different grade, our DBS 900, which has a lower binder content, we find roughness is visibly improved here, although particles still can be seen on the surface. We do not believe that these particles impact the structural integrity of the material and think it's a purely surface effect. One concern many people have with laser processing is subsurface damage. To investigate this, we've taken a cross section of a laser and a brush honed edge. We see no evidence of subsurface cracking or voids in either edge. This is a good indication that laser processing doesn't damage the material structurally. Mapping the composition of the laser honed cutting edge shows, in some places, a drop in the nitrogen content, but no effect on other elements present. This could potentially reduce the hardness of the PCBN in these regions. However, the fact that it doesn't happen all over the cutting edge suggests that it's not a fundamental result of laser processing. More work is required to understand the laser conditions which cause it. When investigating both grades, DCN450 and DBS900, looking at both the unprocessed and laser processed material, we see no discernible change in the binder phase of either of the grades. This indicates no change in the bonding strength or structure of the material. Raman spectroscopy shows transformation of the boron nitride from the cubic phase in the brush hone samples to the hexagonal phase after laser processing. However, this is, a late, this is a surface specific technique and is not thought to have caused any structural change to the material. So in summary, 
We know that some material changes take place as a result of laser processing, including hexagonal boron nitride formation, increased roughness and a potential reduce in nitrogen. However, these aren't thought to structurally weaken the material. Luis is now going to focus on the wear of these tools and show how the microgeometry we've achieved through laser is linked to tool life. Thank you, Luis. Thanks, Maria. In conjunction with that preparation and characterization, we also look the two performance in hack patterning application. Here is our experimental setup. In terms of duration, was a, a continuous OD turning, and the workpiece was 20 chrome manganese titanium, a gear steel from Asia. The operating condition was a typical finishing operation. The test procedure consisted of a three minutes of cutting, followed by an extra three minutes of cutting, and were evaluated after each time interval. Regarding the tools, as mentioned by Wayne and Maria, you tested two grades, the TSN 450 and DBS 900, with the different values for the K-factor. Here is a table with all the K-factors and all the tools analyzed here in application. You can see you have K-factors from 0.4 to more than 4, with the different values for S, Gamma and S Alpha. In terms of output, you measured wear, both flank and crater wear, cutting forces, the three components of the force, and the chip morphology. First, we analyzed the effect of the key factor on the cutting force for all tools, as you can see here in the figure on the left. Basically, you analyze the resultant force against different key factors for the two tool materials, the SN450 and the BS900. First, also, it's important to mention that the cutting force were measured after five seconds of cutting to minimize tool wear for this particular type of analysis. Okay, as you can see here in the figure on the left, for K factor larger than one, the resultant force are fairly constant and is not affected by the two material. For K factor smaller than one, you can see a quite large number for the resultant force and they also not the same for the different materials. You can see almost 30% of difference between DSN 450 and DPS 900. Try, try to understand what's happened here. You, you did the same analysis or look in the same results, but now against S alpha. And in this case, you can consider that S alpha has a first order effect on the resultant force. And the difference between different tools can be attributed to the value of, of S alpha. As you can see here, tools with the same S alpha, you have the same resultant force and larger values for resultant force for tools with a larger S alpha. The effect of the key factor on the chip morphology is now analyzed. On the left, you have result from K factor smaller than one, and on the right, for K factor larger than one. If you look first, the optical images, this one on the bottom for K factor smaller than one, and this one on the right for K factor larger than one, we can see that this one tends to produce a smoother chip surface compared to the one on the K factor larger than one. In the case of the cross section uh, from SEM, this picture here on the top left and this one for K factor larger than one, you can see that this chip is thinner 
and more horizontal when compared to this one for k factor larger than 1. This indicates that lower k factor moves the stagnation point to a lower position, changing the chip flow. Another interesting point here is that the average pitch and the chip thickness slightly increase with the k-factor, suggesting again that the stagnation point moves across the cutting edge. Let's see what's happened with two-wear. Here you are analyzing the two-wear ratio, that is the average flank wear length divided by the crater depth after three and six, six minutes of cutting. It's basically you're looking at this wear ratio for different k-factor of those two time intervals. Another interesting comment here is the fact that you are using only the SN450 because this one is the best material for continuous turning application. In terms of the results, first you can see very similar wear ratio for three and six minutes, suggesting that both times are in a steady state cutting regime. And the second thing important here in terms of results is that increasing the k-factor the wear ratio decrease basically for small k-factor we have small kt and larger vb and for large k-factor we have a larger kt and smaller vb those results here suggest that you can manipulate or change the characteristics of the wear changing the key factor of the two. Now we are look at the effect of the cutting edge radii S gamma and S alpha on the two wear. Here you have the results for the SN450 after six minutes of cutting. On the left you have the relationship between VB and S alpha and on the right KT the crater depth against S gamma. If you look at the results on the left for the same values for S alpha, you have the same values for VB, and when you increase S alpha, you have a large values for VB. On the right side, also a very strong correlation between KT and S gamma. When you increase S gamma, you, have, you increase also the crater depth or KT. From the previous slide and from this one, you can see a clear relationship between the wear the wear morphology and the wear characteristics with the k-factor and more precisely with the cutting edge radii. Considering the cutting test results, here you have the main conclusions. The cutting forces, the chip morphology and the wear ratio are affected by the k-factor. And the key takeaway from the test is that the two performance can be improved by changing the macro geometry of the tool.